Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining me here uh, to discuss the details of Bill 13, the Real Property Governance Act. This legislation will strengthen property governance across our government, as well as its agencies, boards, and commissions. The purpose of this act is to ensure consistency and strategic decision making by implementing a centralized approach to government land and building sales with the goal of making the most efficient use of public infrastructure. If passed, the Act will create a centralized inventory of land owned by government, bringing improved awareness to our government's broader portfolio of real estate investments. We will also require departments, consolidated agencies, boards and commissions, ABCs, offer the transfer of land and buildings no longer required for program purposes, that is, those that are deemed surplus, to be transferred to infrastructure. This offer would be at net book value so that it's simply a transfer of property assets within the government of Alberta's balance sheet. In this way, the transfer occurs at a reduced impact and risk to taxpayers paying twice for the same piece of land. This also cuts red tape and allows properties to be repurposed quickly. I want to be clear, this legislation does not alter decision-making authority. Surplus land decision processes remain the same as they are right now within the respective ministries and its ABC. By modernizing and centralizing property transactions in one ministry, we can support priority investments across government, enhance transparency, create revenue, and ultimately save taxpayer dollars. In terms of next steps, we will further analyze how land and property is managed across government, and this includes the implementation of a centralized ownership model where GOA property is leased instead of transferred to organizations for program delivery, and that is on a go-forward basis. And doing business better for less, is, or for less money is what this legislation uh, and related next steps are all about. So I'll put it back to uh, my press secretary, Jared Gustafson, uh, to handle and moderate the QA. Thank you, Minister. Uh, we will now take some questions from reporters. Just a reminder to th that it, this information is under embargo until the minister tables in the House approximately around 3.15 p.m. Uh, we'll start with those in person and move to the phones. Uh, it will be one question and one follow-up. Please state your name and outlet for the record. And if you're here in person, please raise your hand. Uh, Janet. Uh, so just a way of explanation, the tech briefing was cut off after 20 minutes. We didn't get repeat questions, so we have a okay. lot of technical questions still that are unanswered. Yeah, sure. Um, can you explain what happens, um, say, for example, a university builds a new building, a school is going to build a new school. Who owns that building now if this law passes? Okay. So with a, a school board right now, what happens is you have, say, a, a developer does a development. The, the land gets passed to the municipality, and then the municipality turns that over to the school board. And as we have built the uh, asset, the school, on that property, it goes into um, you know, school reserve, school municipal reserve. That will stay as it is. That won't change. Uh, for schools, uh, what will happen is if... If they have property that they have no use for and it becomes surplus, then they would be required to sell that property to us at net book value. So the go forward basis where schools are concerned uh, takes place uh, for lands that uh, our government outright purchases. So in the course of the last couple of years, that's only happened uh, four or five times. But where this is more applicable to is, uh, say, um, you know, health care, as an example, where we go out, we purchase a large chunk of land, we build a major asset, and then we would transfer that asset and the land to AHS, uh, who's on our consolidated balance sheet, uh, at a nominal fee, which is $1. So instead, what we will do is we will lease that in a long-term lease at a nominal fee instead of transferring away that ownership. And the reason that we're doing that, uh, as I, I can foresee this becoming the next question, uh, the reason that we're doing that is right now, uh, like say, say you wanna, uh, we purchase this land, a lot of times these lands have 
uh, excess on it. If we wanted to, say, put a continuing care center or some other facility on that property, then we would need to purchase those lands or lease those lands. And so we've already done that once. So it's not good practice to pay for properties twice. And so that's, it's about saving money. Okay, so just to clarify on the schools part, and then I do yeah. a second question after sure. that. You're in the go forward basis, you're not trying to own the schools. The mm -hmm. school board would still own the schools. The post-secondaries would still own the It building. still would remain uh, within uh, this, the same function that, that exists right now for the school systems and that municipal reserve, that would, that would still remain. Okay, so, but I'm trying to understand the bigger picture here. Like, you're, you're saying, you know, as opposed to, you know, for example, a school or whatever, going through this process of surplus site where they'd have to be given, you know, right of refer first refusal to other school boards, then the city, then the province before selling it off. You're saying now, I mean, some people might interpret this like as a land grab, right? Like you want control of all this public property. So what is your long game? What is, what is the, not the goal, you know, next year or the year after, yeah. but is there a long-term vision for how you want to control public property in the province? These, these entities already are on the consolidated balance sheet uh, of the government. So government has already paid for these. Um, we have initiatives, uh, you know, for instance, um, housing under seniors and community and social services. They are they're looking for um, for ways and opportunities to be able to um, to access land, to be able to have uh, the developments for social housing. Well, this will provide us uh, opportunities to be able to prioritize uh, land sales. Uh, sorry, prioritize land usage. Uh, for functions such as that. Uh, next question. Uh, Lisa? Uh, yeah, I just have a question about uh, grants in place of taxes. Does this change the GPOD system in any way? Does that essentially eliminate those provincial grants mm, in place no. of taxes for municipal buildings? That's, that's, no, that doesn't change. It doesn't affect it. Yeah. Um, okay, back to the, uh, the Alberta social housing Corporation. I mean, the government's long-term plan for uh, housing is also to privatize some of those. So how does that fit into that? I mean, are we talking about, um, are we going, does this bill pave the way for those um, entities to sell more, <laughs> more of their properties, essentially, <clears throat> that housing plan? Yeah, you... For that, you'd have to talk to uh, Minister Nixon as far as uh, what their program needs are. I can't, uh, I can't speak to that. I mean, really, the the purpose uh, of the legislation kind of is uh, is threefold. Um, one is the uh, centralizing uh, of of property uh, under under one umbrella. Right now, we do not have. It's a a good line of sight on all the departments as well as all the ABCs in what they own. So we want to centralize that and have a, uh, well, it'll have a, a government facing as well as a public facing uh, platform for access to that information. And then two, when the disposal of land happens, when land is deemed surplus, we want the government to have an opportunity to be able to use that land for priority uses. And then three, uh, a policy piece on a go forward basis, we are going to lease uh, to uh, ABCs instead of doing nominal sale transfers. So that's, that's kind of the, the three parts to this. Okay, next question. John from the Western Standard. So you said that you're allowing the agencies, boards and commissions to like you require them to give back surplus land and properties to government uh, with sales. Where do you stand on converting some of that land, uh, those properties and land into housing? Uh, yeah, well, that that is uh, one of the the purposes uh, of this. Depending upon the the location of that land, it may present uh, opportunities uh, for, um, say, uh, our minister of. Um, mental health and addictions, 
or uh, for recovery type centers, or it may be something that is applicable for Minister Nixon in seniors community and social services where there may be an opportunity. Those uh, can be evaluated uh, with each property depending upon uh, where they're located and the needs in that area. You said there's going to be a public lands and properties uh, register created. What will be the process for setting that up? Yeah, so um, once the, uh, the legislation is tabled, uh, we will begin uh, obtaining the information from all departments, from ABCs, and then we'll start to compile that into a database and then create the platform. Uh, so we'll be, we'll be active in this uh, within, within days. Uh, yeah. And Catherine Grakowski, Alberta today. Um, so can you explain how this works in the case of post-secondary? Because I know one of the things they're trying to do with the restructuring of, of their revenues is land sales is a possibility for them. Mm -hmm. So how does it work now? How is it going to change for post-secondaries when they have a piece of land that they want to sell off? Yes. Uh, so anything that's uh, held within uh, the land trust uh, is not included within this. Um, the, you know, the universities are not really in the business of, uh, of buying and selling land. Uh, what, what the universities want to be doing is they, they want to have land and they want to utilize the lands that they have in order to pr provide um, a return on investment for them so that they can have another income stream. And our government supports that and, and that, would, that part would stay in place. And um, I know that part of this act comes into effect upon first reading. Right. Um, it's requiring ministerial approval for all sales, disposals, transfers, transactions. Do all the agencies, boards, commissions, departments, do they know this legislation is coming? Like what kind of consultation did you do with them? Yeah, we're going on the recommendation of uh, the, the, the Blue Ribbon panel in uh, 2019, the McKinnon panel report. Uh, they, had, they had recommended that we create a, a centralized um, mechanism to be able to have good line of sight on all of our, our lands, including with, uh, with ABCs. And they also, it also suggested, and uh, not only suggested, recommended that we develop um, a proper methodology for uh, acquiring and disposing of um, property. And so with that idea, we moved forward. So that's the uh, impetus for uh, for this legislation. So they know it's coming, I guess. Uh, we'll, we're going to be reaching out uh, and and consulting uh, with them. Uh, there'll be a letter going out to to all departments uh, and ABCs as soon as this legislation uh, is tabled, and uh, and we'll be um, having information sessions uh, with all of them so so they'll know uh, how the act works. All right, now we'll go to the phones. Uh, operator, please put through the first, first caller. There are no questions on the phone at this time. Okay. Right. <laughs> we'll do one more in the room. Sure. Lisa. Yeah. Um, oh, I think there's lots of questions. <laughs> we can go all day. We can, yeah, it would be great if we could keep asking until they're, they're all answered. But um, you mentioned this is going to be a cost-saving mm -hmm. effort, going to save taxpayer dollars. Have oh, yeah. you done an assessment of how much money this is going to save the government? Uh, you know, I, I don't have uh, the exact numbers uh, on hand. I guess I, I, could, I could say that uh, agencies, boards, and commissions right now hold approximately $83 billion in, in assets. Um, as a comparison, uh, my department holds about $12 billion. Um, in the course of... Uh, you know, my, I think the last five years, we've probably transferred away uh, over $5 billion worth of assets. Uh, that number, though, I would have to uh, uh, get you uh, exact figures on that, but approximately. So that kind of gives you uh, the idea, an idea of the, the kind of numbers that we're talking about and the, the transferring away of, of assets that, uh, that we do not ha hold uh, as having um, availability to and access to as uh, the government of Alberta. 
Can you just speak a bit more clear about the, the plans for leasing? Right. So you said that that was a policy. So is that not in the that'll bill? Be, that'll be in regulation, yeah. It's okay. it's not required to be uh, in legislation. But So but then you're talking about um, this sort of study or consultation of the benefits of potentially, I don't want to... Like owning everything, <laughs> it, it sounds like. So what exactly, if it sounds like maybe you've already made a decision about the endpoint of that, so what is the purpose of this investigation or study or whatever it is you want to do to assess the feasibility of this leasing approach? Well, I, I think like anything, you know, there's there's always um, uh, development that, that, you're, that you're doing. And that's sort of, uh, you know, our first step with this is to uh, uh, that, that transfer of land aspect and moving to a lease. Uh, so, uh, you know, if we're, we're talking about a, a hospital, if the hospital has a life expectancy of 75 years, you know, we would create a long-term lease. Uh, and the nominal fee right now is, uh, is a dollar transfer, so we would be doing an equivalent uh, moving forward, but just on a lease basis. What's the benefit of, to government, though, of having it be a lease arrangement? And how right. does that work with maintenance? If, like, right. would... No uh, change. Say it's a school, would the school board still be responsible for maintenance for the hospital? Would the, you know, the hospital running agency, whatever it's called, be responsible for maintenance? Yeah. All those processes stay the same. Yeah, there's, there's no change there. All right. Uh, that concludes our press conference. Thank you.